Classic movie fans, Rick Nine G here. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about Laurel and Hardy, more specifically about a short movie of theirs that is called The Perfect Day. Now, this is one that I think is super hilarious. If you're a fan, or maybe if you've seen their movies here and there, it's the one where pretty much the whole movie they're going goodbye, goodbye, and they're trying to go on this trip, and everyone says neighbors and family say goodbye, but they really don't go anywhere, and so it's super hilarious, and we're gonna go visit the goodbye home, the home in which they all get out of, get into their car, and drive off, well that's the goal, and they have all these unfortunate events that they're going to go through. Now, if you've seen one of my previous videos, I went to the two homes from Big Business, that short movie, the silent short film that they had, and that was such an adventure. So if you haven't seen that, go and check it out. I'll put a link in the top of the des description, or you can just Google Rick 9G, Laurel and Hardy, Big Business, Home, something like that, and it'll come up, it should pop up. But anyway, I think you're gonna enjoy that. But here we're gonna go on a bit of an adventure. I think you're gonna absolutely love it. It's gonna be so much fun. Some unexpected things may happen along the way, but I love to go to the home. Remember that I can't go inside. These are private homes. This is something that I make a big deal out of. We're not going to a movie set. We're not going to a filming movie or a television studio. We're going to a real home. And that's what they used to do in the 20s. Why? Well, it's more practical at that time, right? There were not a lot of planes, not a lot of traffic, and it was just practical not to build the set from scratch, but you just go to a home, pay someone, and boom, the next day you're there, right? The next day you, you can start filming. You don't need to spend two, three weeks or a month to build a front facade or a front place of a home. You would remember like Rob Zombie, he took, I don't know, several months to recreate the Munster's home. But now with new technology, with airplanes, with noise, with a city, with sirens, it's a lot harder to go to someone's home and film because you have a lot of outside noise, you have people watching. So now they go inside a sound stage, they build the set, and they don't have to worry about it. They don't have to worry about planes, trains, buses, any noise or any people gathering. It's just so much easier. It may take a little longer, but they have a controlled space. And so we're going to go back to essentially 1929 and look at this home. You're going to notice that a lot of it is very much like it was back in 1929, we being now in 2022. So it's super amazing, come with me. I will always say, it's not just the moment of boom, here's the home, that's it, I'm leaving. It's the journey, it's the journey on getting there. So come along this journey with me, see what we encounter, see what other things we may find, because that's part of the fun for me. It's the unexpected things that may come along and what me, we may learn from the actual journey. So let's get to there and let's drive to the location. Couch. Let me tell you what's happening here. Now the main boulevard, which is right behind me, is called Venice Boulevard. They're doing some asphalt construction on a Saturday at noon, right? Crazy thing. But so they're repaving or they're re-asphalting, whatever you, you, know, you call it properly. The whole idea is that I need to get across that street and then over a couple streets. They've sectioned off parts of the street. And so I had to come around like this, there's a lot of one ways and I'm right next to the Helms Baker. I don't know if any of you have heard of this. I'll show you a little bit of it. It used to be a big, big bread factory. It's no longer bread factory. It's little restaurants and furniture shops and stuff like this, but they left the original building, which is really cool. And so anyway, I'm gonna get over there. I'm gonna show you the journey to getting over there. It's not that easy. You should just be able to drive into the street park and walk 20 feet. No, I have to cross that main boulevard, which you can kind of see over there, um, which is, there's a center, it's an avenue actually. And so there's like a center crazy divider, four lanes, four lanes. And then once I do that, I have to go two streets over and down. It's not crazy, but what I'm saying is sometimes this is trickier than it looks. So let's get there. For those of you who don't know, LA parking is really crazy. I mean, this one's pretty simple to figure out, right? You can't park here Monday, so 12 to 3, so that's good. Two hour parking, 8 to 8, so that's good. So I put stuff in the meter. But let me show you how crazy it can get. Now, that's this is what I mean. This is the official popular Helms Olympic Bakery. Look at that. Choice of Olympic champions. This whole, it was like a crazy, crazy popular... Um, location like look at that it looks almost like a movie studio you see that building that's really really cool and we're gonna walk alongside it look every single portion of the building has stamped helms olympic bakery over there too look 
best loaf of bread awarded by the Steady California Agricultural Society. That is crazy. Like how fancy, and this building goes the entire block. And so it's really, really awesome. Look, they even have this over here. Very cool. Okay, so if you can figure these signs out, how, do, how does that even make sense? That's crazy. Wow. I might have to do a video just on the Helms Bakery. I don't know if there's a lot of movie history to it, to be honest with you, but I, I mean, growing up, I used to pass through Culver City and look at all these buildings. It's pretty crazy just to know the history of Culver City. It's like its own little city in Los Angeles. You can see all the road construction that's going on here. And the road is closed off over there. You can't drive in on this side. So we have to go in on one of these streets over here. So, yeah, see that road closed. So we'll have to figure out how to get to Vera Street, V-E-R-A. See these people here? These people are probably going to the little shops here at the Helms Bakery on this side. See, look, there's house lighting, stuff like that. There's like a lot of little shops because this whole warehouse factory thing is huge. So there's a lot of space for businesses and stuff like that. So there's actually Helms Avenue named after the bakery. There's even a parking lot over there. So we got to go to Vera, which I believe is down there. So this is what this has become. It's kind of cool. So I just crossed. I want to get a good view of everything. Very cool. This is gigantic and it stretches all the way to the end of the block, that bakery. So it's kind of cool that they have the road asphalt stuff going on because it kind of reduces traffic. See, cars can't come in. That's why I couldn't come in this way. I was trying to drive in like this and make a turn. So sometimes these filming location journeys aren't as straightforward, but there's a gentleman there in a blue shirt. That is Vera Street right there. So it's not that far. It's not that far at all, but we have to walk in that way. And it's at the end of the street. It's one of these streets that basically end at a T intersection and it's a nice little residential area. And there it is. So we're at Vera Avenue, Venice and Vera. This is where we want to be. And we want to go to the end of the street, which is kind of cool because the Howl Roach Studios is not far. It's over across a couple miles down, maybe like two miles that way. It's not that far at all. Okay, we're almost there. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. I don't have my stabilizer because it's just bigger and bulkier and I think it catches more attention. No, I don't want to catch more attention. Even though there's no one around. Last time we didn't get the best greeting ever from someone. Because we're on the sidewalk. Look, we're just walking. We're just walking. Oh, there it is. There's the, the perfect day home from Laurel and Hardy. Look at the blue, the blue accents on the home. Remember, this is a private home. People live there. Seems like no one's, like, maybe. But that's so cool. I'm not gonna go closer, but this is awesome. This is so cool. Doesn't it look old timey? It almost looks like a little cottage, right? It looks like a little cottage from Disneyland or something like that. And the old timey car was parked actually right here. And they were saying goodbye, goodbye to the neighbors on this, in this home. And it's just very, very cool. Um, yeah, look at that. No parking anytime. So I wouldn't have been able to park there in the first place. But that is so awesome. I love, if you look at the architecture, the window and the little grate on the left window. Here, let me get the pole out of the way. On the left, the two, two windows over here, and then the main door, right, which is curved like this. The little windows on top of the planters, all that's in the movie. The roof line and everything, which is so amazing, so cool. The little picket fence. I mean, so cool. I love it. This is probably the best angle. It's not the angle from the movie, but it's the angle that you can see the home best at. 
and yeah, it's just wonderful. Looks so nice. Um, the only thing that's probably modern is that antenna up there, which wasn't there when the, sh when the movie was, I was going to say show. And so that's awesome. I hope you enjoy this. Um, look at stuff like this. I love doing this. This is so much fun. It is so much fun being able to do this, um, to go to these locations, to go to these homes, um, just because it's history. And like I said, this home is not a studio set. People are living in it. The original purpose was that it was cheaper to go to a home that was already built, pay them a little bit and be like, hey, don't be in your home for a couple days. We're gonna film outside of it. And then it's all built, right? They didn't need, they just scouted around for a home that looked really nice. And once it did, they went there. Although going and building that, they're like, we don't wanna go through the trouble of building that. So it's already built, right? But now if they wanna control things like LA, you can see how populated it is. You, you hear sirens now. Imagine you're filming a movie, you hear sirens. Or you have an airplane running above. That's why they moved inside a studio now. That's why you may think, well, why do they do that now? Why do they film something? Like they could film that home or they could build that home set and put it inside a sound stage a big sound stage like a big warehouse and then they control all the sounds so you don't hear sirens like that you don't hear airplanes flying above it doesn't disturb the filming process so in the 20s it would make sense but it doesn't make sense today so 1929 the perfect day we just visited the home hopefully that is enjoyable to you we're coming upon the helms bakery homes that way Helms Bakery that way. And what a wonderful little trip. What a wonderful little trip. You can still hear the sirens. One thing about LA is when you hear sirens, it takes a while to actually see the, uh, the truck because it's just going and going and going. We might eventually see the truck, but I'm not sure about that. So we might see it on the other side. Nope, see, still can't see it. It does smell like asphalt. It does not smell like bread. It smells like caramel. Caramel? Caramel. Mmm, bread. I can imagine what this area used to smell like when they did make the bread here. All right, everyone, it is a hot day today. We went to our location, went through all the construction. I showed you a little bit of LA. You heard some sirens. You saw the home from the Laurel and Hardy short, The Perfect Day. And it was pretty much a perfect day today because we were able to get to the location, no confrontation, nothing like that. People look at you still with a camera. I'm sitting right here and there's someone parked on the other side of the street. I'm being stared at and that's just that's just part of it. It almost seems like what? No one has seen a camera before. Um, but they also maybe don't see a lot of people in a car talking to their camera. But, you know, it's, it's 2022, so get with the times, everyone. Uh, I'm sure all of you are fine with it, but some people are like, huh? So it's kind of comical. Thank you so much for the support. If you want to see more videos like this on filming locations, Laurel and Hardy, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe. What are you doing if you're watching and you're not subscribed? It's absolutely free to do so, and it's a wonderful way to support the channel. We'll see you next time. There's a bit of a traffic jam. Truck right there, and there's a truck car right there. Um, they want to be on the channel, I guess. That's a thing. We'll see you next time, and don't forget, be hopeful. Thank you so much to my supporters on Patreon, especially my Diamond Tier patrons. New patron Gerard D, David D, Citizen Kane 359, Greg S, Kevin K, Ricky, Sally, and Vito L. Make sure to check the links in the description to see how you could be on this list as well.